Hey everyone, this is a special edition of Carrie Pena Reports. Today we are with two trailblazers who founded an organization that to date has saved and changed the lives of more than 10 million children. We sit down with them for a rare interview at their home in Paradise Valley, Arizona, to talk about leadership and how you can't let anyone deter you from your dreams. Here's that interview. We are on location today talking about the power of positive change, and I'm here with two very well-known change makers, Yvonne Federson and Sarah O'Mara, the founders of Child Help. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. I love joining you. Thank you for inviting us into your home. And there is so much to talk about. You are celebrating 60 years of Child Help, and we will talk about all of the incredible accomplishments. But first, I want to talk to you about the leadership lessons that you've learned over the years. Because you ladies were really change makers before it was in vogue to be so. Where did you find your courage in the late 1950s, early 1960s to stand up and say, we see a problem and we want to change? Well, I think it was because we felt so deeply about what was happening to these children. Uh, We began taking care of the half American child that were known as thrown away throwaway children in Japan and Vietnam. And um, so when we saw their suffering and the fact that these were God's precious children and uh, they were not being taken care of, it was something we just had to do. That gave us the courage to speak out because remember those wars were not uh, exactly popular wars, so to speak. So yeah. um, The opposite. <laughs> yeah. the, very much the opposite. Also, and we so, were very young. Yes. And we just did it. You know, <laughs> yeah. you saw we saw something. Nate and we said, we've got to do it. And that was we're it. going we to kill it. You Listen, jumped in But action. we never dreamed it would be our whole life. No. I mean, we were actresses at the time. And so um, that's what we thought we would be doing. But it ended up that this became our life's mission. And then after we built the orphanages, we built nine orphanages, a hospital for orphans and a school. Um, in Japan and Vietnam. In yes. Japan and Vietnam. We, uh, we thought that that was it. And what happened is when we were speaking as keynote speakers about the Operation Baby Lift, because we, it was our organization that brought the babies over after the war ended. Um, then Governor Reagan and Mrs. Reagan, Nancy and Ronnie, uh, were there at, uh, on the dais with us. And, uh, Nancy stopped Yvonne and me and said, you're just the two to do this. You need to do something about child abuse in our country. Well, no one had ever heard about child abuse. It was never, ever mentioned. The, all the laws protected. That was back, way back in 75. Yeah. Yes. And, and the laws protected the perpetrator, mm-hmm. not the child. So we did jump in to do that. And, uh, state by state, we had to ch- help change laws so that, um, we could have safety for these children. And then we built organ, we built uh, villages for abused children, advocacy centers, the National Child Abuse Hotline. It continued to grow and grow. It so Nancy grow. Reagan encouraged you ladies. Oh, she they knew that us. you were the two to do it. So you, you had a lot of famous friends, but that's not enough to, uh-huh. to make an en- entire organization as big and powerful as yours. What was it, do you think, Yvonne, inside you that made you believe that you could do it? Because you have helped change and save the lives of millions of children. Well, we felt this was a calling for both of us because we were selected out of 500 actresses to go on this trip. So even at the time when we were selected, we looked at each other and we said, God must have a plan for this trip, for for the two of us to be selected. They didn't even know we knew each other. So for us to be selected was really something. And then when we found these children, we thought, That's why we're here. We're supposed to help these children. Well, one thing led to another. Then when we were asked to do this, we felt within our heart, of course, we pray about everything, and we've always dedicated our organization to God. He's really the CEO of our (laughs) organization. But uh, we also were blessed to have many 
fabulous people to support us. Not only the stars, but we have volunteers who have been with us 30 and 40 and 50 years. Now think about that. So it's become their mission a lifetime. also. <laughs> a lifetime. Yeah. A lifetime. Now, they have so many great star stories. Can't even get into the whole Elvis <laughs> Presley and all this, um, because then I'd be just become a fangirl. Um, but I am interested in, in that passion. Uh, and just the, the concept that you saw when you started to make mm -hmm. change that it was possible. Absolutely. And and when you start to see that, because I think a lot of people who are watching and listening to the show, and the show is about the power of positive change. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't know our own power. You ladies were Everyone young. Everyone has it. Everyone has it. Talk to me about but that. And when you realized it. that you had it. Well, we realized we had it when, frankly, we depended on God. Because we always ask to be guided. We don't want our plan, because that's a meager plan compared to what God has planned for each one of us. That's right. There's a plan for every single individual, and we can make changes. Every one that is on this earth can make a change. They have to choose to want to make a change. That's the difference. They have to know that, that the answer to life is in service to others. And once you get that, then your life lives outside of yourself. It's not, not all about me, me, me. Instead, you want to reach out. You want to make a difference in people's lives, and you can. There isn't anybody listening, anybody out there that cannot make a change, a difference in someone's life, but in a lot of lives, if you so choose. And we've been very blessed to attract people that have hearts like that, mm -hmm. that want to serve. They have a servant's heart. And they're very, very dedicated. And we really love and appreciate them. And all the people, maybe they can't be a volunteer, but they support us in other ways. Whatever way they help, it's wonderful. And God will bless them for that. Because I want to point out that, I mean, you ladies are obviously a, a beautiful to this very day. Um, but uh, but when you went on this mission, I mean, you were young, hot ho Hollywood <laughs> yeah. starlets. And you didn't have to put your sort of glamour aside to start rescuing children. But you, but you felt that was your calling. But you see, mm -hmm. everything kind of comes together as you get older. You look back and you realize that being an actress was part of our life. And it opened up many, many doors mm -hmm. for us to, of course, I married a Hollywood producer too, which helped. But all those doors open up different things that help the organization. For instance, the stars. They were a great asset to our organization. But like I say, the volunteers then were great. So it's wonderful how God opens up doors when we open up our heart to serve Him. Were there people along the way who tried to discourage you oh. and as child help continued oh, to grow? Yes. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Big <laughs> time. Every time you do anything good, you're going right. to have the other side that um, not always is very complimentary. Uh, they will find, other people may find fault with anything that you do. The main ingredient is perseverance. Mm -hmm. If you know something is right to do, you cannot let anyone discourage you. And when we built the very first residential treatment center for child abuse in our nation, um, people were saying to us, particularly in social service, mm -hmm. well, you can't do that. Nobody's been able to do that. And you don't have a degree in social service and it will never be a success. Well, from the day we've opened, it's been successful. That was 40 years ago. And we have built other villages for abused children across the nation. So you cannot let others define who you are and who you want to be. You know what Sarah said when she said, when you know something is right, it's so true because we knew the villages were right. We knew the centers were right. Every time we've opened a program or started a program, it's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. But when we know something or anyone knows something within your heart that's right to do, just like Sarah said, don't let other people discourage you. Keep your eye on what you're supposed to do. Keep your eye on the gold and you will make it through because it's right for you to do. Is there any sort of, and I know that you draw so much inspiration from your faith, which is Absolutely. so deep and guiding in your life, but where else? I mean, what are there sort of affirmations uh, or is it the friendship between the two of you where when one is down, the other one says, we can continue? Well, we, uh, we realize that it's so much easier when you have a partner, when you have someone that thinks like you do, 
they're mission driven and uh yes we help each other through our dark times everybody has problems everybody has obstacles right. in their families in their personal life in their business and we've life. been through it all together <laughs> yeah, and everything and um, so we do help each other through those times and that's been very helpful but also you never get through life uh, as a success unless others reach out and help you mm -hmm. and so we have had many wonderful mentors in our life to whom we could look up and see uh what made their life successful and and how they react to things and so we learn from each other and you also learn through everything that you go through you think at the time oh this is terrible we're never going to make it through this problem but you do and when you get through it you usually learn something great it's a great lesson for us to to grow let's talk a little bit more about child help for those listening and watching who aren't familiar with the organization uh, child help is dedicated to the prevention and treatment of child abuse According to your website, over 10 million children have been impacted. Uh, I want to go through a few of the wins. You have built advocacy centers and group homes uh, for children who have already, unfortunately, yes. been affected by child abuse. You have created prevention programs like the Child Help uh, Speak Up, Be Safe program, mm -hmm. which is spreading to more schools in Arizona and across the country. We like to be in every school, yes. especially here in Arizona. Your goals are always <laughs> lofty. And, and th this one, mm -hmm. I think, is all of them are important. But I love that you established this national mm -hmm. child abuse hotline, which, by the way, I want to give out that number is one 800 for a child and this is done in multiple languages because i think in my mind about the moment when a child is scared and hiding and and doesn't know what to do and where do you turn so you ladies have tried to think through those problems yes and it's the only hotline that has degreed professionals answering the phones not and volunteers so they really um are it's more than a hotline they're therapists that can talk the, the child through it and uh, not just give out a number, even though we do that as well. We um, are, uh, for the first time in history, we're having texting and uh, that's something else that is new. Thank you for reminding yes. me about that because that's huge. It's it is huge, huge because the children are kind of afraid naturally to talk about what's going on, but they're so used to texting mm -hmm. that they go for like, 45 minutes and tell you everything. So that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. How much does it matter to you that these children have the opportunity to see that life can be beautiful? Oh. Child abuse, I, as a news anchor and, and reporter, I know that it is an uncomfortable, mm -hmm. it is an uncomfortable conversation. There's no question about it. And a it. lot of people don't like to talk about it, but, but what is going on in a lot of homes is very, very tragic. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you ladies to give a resource to children who are suffering? It means everything because it means a change of their life. It also means they don't have to go through so much suffering. So many, many times we have had survivors come back and say, oh, if I'd only known about mm -hmm. that one 800 the number four, a child, mm -hmm. where I could have gotten help, but they didn't know where to go. And they didn't even know they were being abused sometimes because it started so young, they thought everybody was abused like that. And so it, it, it means everything because what you're doing is giving safety to a child. You're giving them their life because child abuse can rob you of your youth, of your young life, and it sticks with you a long time. It takes a lot to overcome that. And one of the first things we do when the children come into our villages is give them a sense of self-worth because they just feel that they're nobody. We, have, we had a child that came in with bad kid burned into his back with cigarette burns. Bad kid. And when mm -hmm. you would ask him what his name was, he'd say bad kid because mm -hmm. he was called that. And that's what he thought his name was. So you have to really work with these children to let them know how precious they really are and that there's only one set of uh, fingerprints and that's theirs. And they can make a big difference in their life. And once they know that and they 
they understand how precious they truly are as a human being, the healing can start then. And so, yes, it means everything to see a life change. So I'm thinking about all the people out there who are inspired by you and what you've been able to accomplish. And we cannot all be a Sarah and Yvonne. You guys have created something truly special, but each in our own way, we have the ability. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Over the years, as you've seen, one child's life changed and another Many child's child. life and, oh. and, and then thousands right. and then millions. Uh -huh. It truly is a story about all things are possible mm. when we really care. There's Absolutely. No caring is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a caring heart, it takes you down a pathway, a beautiful mm -hmm. journey of life. Because when you truly care about people, you truly care about feelings, you truly care to make that child whole again, then what this does to you on the inside, it develops you as a person and it gives you the strength really from within. You may not know from which it cometh, but uh, that's what gives us the strength is in order to give back to another. Is there, has there ever been, and I imagine I know the answer to this, but there has there ever been a time when you think, Okay, we're, you know, we're no. ready to retire and <laughs> no. and around you ladies, you have to do this like puts mine to shame. I mean, but you have already accomplished so much, but yet but there's more to accomplish. There's always more to accomplish. There's more left to do. Yep. And we have great plans for uh developing other programs that have never been developed. We're kind of known as um the trailblazers to get out there and start programs that have never been done before. We opened the first advocacy center with everything under one roof, meaning yes. the police, the social services, the hospital, An and everything. integrative approach. And, right. Uh, that's right. correct. And this new one's going to be like that. And, um, one. and then the villages, we were the first ones to open that. We're the first ones for the hotline. We're the first ones to have prevention in our schools. And, um, so we're kind of the trailblazers in that respect. We're not afraid to take risks, which you have to in life. So let's talk a little bit about that because I think that's a really important point. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be very scary yes, to be the course. person who says, well, we can do it a little differently. And there are a lot we of naysayers along there. And there's a lot of naysayers. We might get scared within ourselves and talk to each other, but we don't let anyone else know. <laughs> <laughs> but how do no, you fight happened. through that and see that, okay, I have this vision and I know, I know that vision is something that we should try to, to test out. Yes, we're um, working on a vision right now that has never been done before that will integrate all of our programs. Mm -hmm. It will be literally a city. And so we're working on that now and uh, we hope to see that come to pass. So you ladies, and and then you know, I know it's not appropriate to ask age, but um, I mean, but you're we you're, don't mind that you're you know, so do you do you care saying no. how? Like, uh, I'll be eighty five in uh, September. And Yvonne, do you? I'll be eighty four in April. So you're the younger. I am the younger one. You're the younger one. You're the younger one. But there's no. But I appreciate you saying that. But you know, because I think as a woman, I look at you ladies and truly you inspire me so much well, to keep you. going and to keep building well, and as that, long as we have our health we're going to continue right on mm -hmm. and we work every day and and you still see how much you can contribute to to your vision yes, yes we hope so but there are a lot of people that help us yeah we, we have, have a great staff we have great volunteers as we mentioned i mean they're wonderful we haven't done and this look, you're helping us right now I mean, you're getting the word out. It's That's just, right. it's, it really is remarkable though to see that 60 years later you are as enthusiastic, if not yes. more, <laughs> than when you were those young starlets who got sent on that, that movie assignment all those yes. years ago. What does it mean to you to be celebrating the 60th year to know that you've had this kind of impact? It's a wonderful feeling. Um, because we don't think when you, you know, when you start something, you don't think, oh, well, it's 60 years. I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, you have no idea. It's just one step at a time. But when we look back over these six decades and the children that have been helped through our organization, uh, we realize that anything is possible. You have to set your goals, as Yvonne said, 
you have to to continue on that pathway on and goal. not let anyone deter you if you know it's the right way, regardless of what is said, uh, what what seems to be a lack at the time, whether it's monetarily or whatever. Uh, you'll have to know that it's going to be provided because we all we're, we talk about God a lot, but we have to because it's the way that it's done. Mm -hmm. If uh, if we didn't depend on God, we wouldn't be here uh, to celebrate the 60th anniversary and have helped ten and a half million children. And we're just grateful that both of us are here and both of us have our health. Yes, and be able to celebrate. What an incredible our journey you've had together. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, really, your friendship is something. And for our the husbands ages. were best friends. They I had know. to be. <laughs> I mean, it just defies what sometimes people think about women not being able to truly be in lockstep with one another because mm -hmm. I see it a whole different way. A lot mm -hmm. of people said that. In fact, a lot of um, our celebrities that, that have been with us through the years, you know, Jane Seymour and Cheryl Ladd and Kathy Lee, and Kathy Lee the Gitter, list goes on and they on. will They've say to fabulous. us, the greatest miracle is your friendship yes. because it's lasted so long and you can work together so yes. harmoniously. It's such a and partnership. It it's and awesome. on the subject, um, just as we as we close things out here on the subject of celebrities, you, you ladies have some of the biggest and uh, most extravagant, beautiful galas, including the Drive the Dream, which draws a lot of celebrities. It's held in, um, in Phoenix. But you also do um, beautiful galas in California, and but I'm in back east in Washington and Tennessee, yeah. all over, yeah. which are which are beautiful, extravagant affairs. But I do want to point out for the audience who may have you know heard about these galas, as I've been and, and disclaimer here, I'm a volunteer on the Drive the Dream committee, but as I've gotten to know you, yes, the dressing up is fun, and okay. yes, the celebrity that's all fun, but what matters to you is what's getting done with the money. That's right. That's, That's right. what matters That's to you right. because you have big goals and dreams. We're Even at 84, 84 and 85 years yeah. old, you still have a lot of to accomplish. We do. And, um, you know, as long as there's one hurting child out there, That's right. we're going to keep going. And Yvonne, what's your final and message? And we really hope that you young people will carry <laughs> on yes. when we cross over. We really pray that every night. I only because feel like I could be a small portion of filling your shoes but i am so privileged to be a part of it because learning from women like you is is really a blessing for me thank you both say. thank you you're a thank blessing you. to us too and thank all those who are listening to this program today who support child help we really appreciate it and we know the children certainly appreciate it their lives would be totally different without their help and for for more information on child help we would uh, love for you to go to the website childhelp.org thank you so much for watching and for listening to carrie pena reports and you can find out more information on our website inspiredmedia360.com take care everyone